And a good education can pave the way for people to become anything they can dream of. Some even become authors and write incredible books. And Alex actually had the chance to talk with one this morning. Author Michael Solomon is a former NYPD special investigator and former intelligence officer to the U.S. State Department. He joins us today to talk about his new political thriller, The Conversion Prophecy, which takes a unique approach to explaining the massive swings in the stock markets every day. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Alex. How are you this morning? Doing really well. It's great to have you on to talk about this great book. So tell us, what can people expect when Thank they crack you. open your book? Well, it's a, uh, it's a political thriller that will take them from the halls of a mosque in Indonesia all the way up to the uh, steps and into the White House uh, with the Venturian candidate. And uh, the book deals with the economic takeover of the world by Islam. Uh, so uh, what we've done is we've uh, come up with a scenario how Islam secretly buys up the controlling interest of most corporations and sectors in the world, from food to energy to water, uh, telecommunications, to transportation, and then one day realize that they own it all and control it all and tell the world you either convert to Islam or we starve you out. And uh, fortunately uh, for my readers, they will find a surprise at the end, which uh, gives it a happy ending, uh, but it is a suspenseful novel. And uh, it begs the question of uh, does Wall Street really know who the CEOs of these major corporations are, are these net swings in this stock market in the last month or so being controlled and contrived. Right. So it's a, it's a frightening scenario, but uh, yeah. It, it is. Now, your main character, Robert Amanti, you know, we find him taking presidential office at the beginning of the story in, in a world that's really sort of utopic. Do you think that sort of utopia where there's no political problems, there's no financial problems, is that really a, a scenario that can actually happen? Or is that something that you think will never occur? Well, I'm not Al, I'm not Ayn Rand, but uh, the uh, it it takes the it takes the premise that 20 years from now there is peace in the world. Most countries have abandoned their armies and their military budgets, and uh, it shows that uh, terrorism was only a uh, a guise to hide what's really going on in the background, which was the systematic purchasing of many corporations and taking control of the world economically. Uh, it does go from utopian society to dystopian society, showing that uh, they want to convert the world. And um, it's something that can happen, but, um, you know, when you think about what's happening, I mean, in, in 2009, Citibank gave up 4.9 percent of their stock to the Saudis for, uh, for a $13 billion loan. Sharia-compliant financing has come to Seattle. Uh, you know, so the question is, uh, you know, we concerned with the political candidates talking about the concern about Muslims crossing the border. They don't have to cross our border physically. They're doing it through our corporations. And uh, it, it can happen. I mean, uh, Verizon, in my book, I discuss how they're going to be the largest Internet supplier in the world. And in May, they just bought out AOL and they're going after other companies. Uh, Kraft and, and, um, and uh, has merged. With, uh, with uh, a couple of companies, and uh, ConAgra is looking to go after the food industry. So the question is, um, are the CEOs uh, sympathizers or are they converts? Um, right. Something to think about. Right. You so, bring up uh, a lot of interesting scenarios. Now, would you say that your real-life experiences have sort of fueled the way that the story's told and the details inside the book? A little bit. Uh, you know, I, I stay away from the cloying sentimentality. You know, when you describe something, I don't describe it with 12 pages and go off on a tangent. You know, I have a story to tell, so I get right to the point. But I do relate to some of my investigative techniques that I've used years ago to show how things can, can come about. So we do that. But um, we get away from, as I say, we get away from the uh, describing everything 62 different ways and get right to the story. Right. Now, you, you know, you're sort of entering a genre, international thrillers, that, that sort of uh, hold some big names, some big authors. So did you feel at all, you know, sort of uh, intimidated taking on this sort of uh, project? No, I never even thought about it. I just wrote it right the way I wanted to write it, right out of my head and out of my heart. Uh, in order to do my, uh, my research, the, I only read one book, and that was the Koran. Everything else, as I say, is fiction. But, you know, fiction is nothing more than a fairy tale for adults, and uh, most fairy tales have a happy ending, and this one does. Uh, I was shocked last week when the book won the a national award as the best book in fiction for 2015 by books and authors. That surprised me. So, uh, and Hollywood is getting ready to uh, write the screenplay on it, which, as a matter of fact, it should be ready by the end of February. 
Uh, don't buy the popcorn yet because it's going to be a while, <laughs> yeah. a while before it winds up on a screen. But uh, they That's are looking great. at it. Yeah, you so know, we'll see what happens. We're we'll looking see what forward happens. to that. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to the, I mean, the book is, is wonderful. It's beautifully written. And Michael Solomon, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on with us today and telling us all about it. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks for, right. you have a great day. Definitely. You too. Now stay where you are. Morning Blend. We'll be right back.